Jeremiah chapter 52, the conclusion, 52 chapters, that we're going back into history. 51, well actually 50 and 51 are prophecy. 52, Jeremiah ends with the destruction of Judah, Jerusalem, and the temple. 51, well, 50 and 51 are the results of what Babylon has done in chapter 52. Again, it goes back to what in Genesis 12, I will curse them that curse you. Free will of man, Babylon did not have to do, but they did. And we read today, what would be to those that offend the little ones? In you don't have to offend. But Jesus says, woe unto them that offend, that do do it. But you don't have to. Judas was never, ever condemned to sell Jesus out. There was a free will. Zedekiah was 1 and 20 years old when he began to reign. Now we're dating again. And he reigned 11 years in Jerusalem. And his mother's name was Hamatol, the daughter of Jeremiah, of Libna, not the Jeremiah of the book. He did that which was evil in the eyes of the Lord, according to all that Jehoiakim had done. For though, or through the anger of the Lord, it came to pass in Jerusalem and Judah, till he had cast him out of his presence, that Zedekiah rebelled against the king of Babylon. God told Jeremiah to tell them, Go, surrender yourself. And he surrenders not, rebels against the king of Babylon, and which relies on rebelling against God. And it came to pass in the ninth year of his reign, in the tenth month, in the tenth day of the month. So it will be ten, ten, nine. Ten is a Gentile number. He and all his army against Jerusalem and pitched against it. And built forts against it round about. So here's, ne here's Nebuchadnezzar. He's at the front door of Jerusalem. Again. This is the third and final time. So the city was besieged unto the eleventh year of King Zedekiah. Now we read in verse 1. The eleven years. Now we read uh, verse 5. Eleven year it was 10, 10, 9. 4, 9, 11, it's been 18 months. And in the fourth month, in the ninth day of the month, that the famine was sore in the city, that there was no bread for the people of the land. Now, what's this tell you? Remember what they said about Jeremiah? Feed him with the bread of affliction till the bread be gone. Jeremiah is now in prison. Then the city was broken up, and all the, they broke it in. Destroyed, and all the men of war fled. The army of the Hebrews fled and went forth out of the city by night. And that's something that Ezekiel speaks about. Remember, he said, Blindfold yourself, take your goods, and dig through the hole and cover your eyes so you can't see. Ezekiel shall be assigned to you. This is exactly what they're doing, Ezekiel foretold. By the way of the gates between the two walls, which was by the king's garden. Now the Chaldeans were by the city round about all around the city, and they went by the way of the plain. But the army of the Chaldeans pursued after the king and overtook Zedekiah in the plains of Jericho. So he heads kind of uh, uh, southeast. And his army was scattered from him. Zedekiah, was, he had no secret service. He had no, he had no military with him. Then they took the king and carried him up unto the king of Babylon to Ribla in the land of the Hamath. Where he, gave, where he gave judgment upon him. This is the last king. Last of Jerusalem. And the king of Babylon slew the sons of Zedekiah before his eyes. He slew also all the princes of Judah in Riblah. Then he put out the eyes of Zedekiah. So the last thing Zedekiah sees is the, is the torture and death of his sons. And his rulers. The king of Babylon bound him in chains. 
and carried him to Babylon, where God told him to go. Problem is, now he's blind and now he's bound. He can't do nothing. I realize God will get you where he wants you. It doesn't matter how he's going to get you there. Zedekiah is no more use. And put him in prison to the day of his death. That's it. What more could have been written of Zedekiah had Jeremiah told him, Surrender to the Babylonians and God will protect you. And he would have stepped out of that kingdom, stepped out of the wall of Jerusalem, say, uh, Babylonian forces, Chaldea, my God has told me to surrender to you. <coughs> I'm going to put myself in the mercy of God. Here I am. He would not have died in a prison. Because God had told him, if you do what I tell you, I'm going to protect you. Now in the fifth month, in the tenth day of the month, which was the nineteenth year of Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon. Now we're, now we're going to date by Nebuchadnezzar. We're done with the kings of Judah. The next king that will show up will be Jesus. From Jeremiah 52 to Jesus Christ, seated in Jerusalem, in the millennium, the start thereof, there are no more kings of Israel or Judah. King of Babylon came Nebuchadnezzar, captain of the guard, which served the king of Babylon into Jerusalem, and burned the house of the Lord. So he had to go into that house, what we're going to see a little bit later. That was a sin. And the king's house, and all the houses of Jerusalem, and all the houses of the great men, burned he with fire. Everything was destroyed. Everything that could burn, burned. And all the army of the Chaldeans that were with the captain of the guard break down all the walls of Jerusalem round about. And that's exactly how Nehemiah finds when he takes his little ride on his donkey. The neighbor, neighbor Zidan, the captain of the guard, carried away the cap, the captain, no, carried away captive certain of the poor of the people, and the residue of the people that remained in the city, and those that fell away, and those and that fell to the king of Babylon, the rest of the multitude. But neighbor Zidan, the captain of the guard, left certain of the poor of the land for fine dressers and for husbandmen. We read that. When he approaches Jeremiah and said, this has happened to you because of your sin. Jeremiah is out of jail now. Also the pillars of brass that were in the house of the Lord. That were in the house of the Lord. And the bases. And the brazen seed that was in the house of the Lord. That was the, 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 the labor. The Chaldeans brank. They broke it and carried all the brass of them to Babylon. That The brazen labor was broken. The cauldrons also, the shovels, the snuffers, and the bowls. Little things. Get this now, the little things. And the spoon. Now we read in Ezra and Nehemiah that all this came back by weight. But spoons. God cares about his spoons. There is. And all the vessels of brass wherein they ministered took they away. God will reckon what is his. And the basins, and the fire pans, and the bowls, and the cauldrons, and the candlesticks. Remember, there were ten of them. And the spoons again. If God owns a spoon, it's his spoon. And the cups. Now, I'm saying this for a reason. That which was gold and gold, and that which was silver and silver, took the captain and the guard away. So verse 18 is the brass. Verse 19 is the silver, the gold. The two pillars, one C, and twelve basin bulls, that was the, the brazen altar that Solomon built, that he put upon the bulls, that were under the bases, which King Solomon had made in the house of the Lord. Those survived all the years. The brass of all these vessels was without weight. And concerning the pillars, the height of one pillar was 18 cubits, and a fillet of 12 cubits did compass it. And the thickness thereof was four fingers 
it was hollow. And the chapter of brass was upon it, the height of one chapter, little things, five cubits. The network and the pomegranates, little things, upon the cha chapter, round about, all brass. The second pillar, also pomegranates, were like unto these. And there was ninety and six pomegranates on a side, and all the pomegranates upon the network were a hundred and was a hundred round about. Little things. What's missing? What's missing that it's missing in Second Chronicles? Where's the ark? And Harrison Ford is not ever going to find it. Because the next time you read that ark is when you go to the book of Revelation and the, the, the temple is open. Guess what shows up? Now, in order for Harrison Ford to find that ark means he had to go to heaven and buy his movie. He went to heaven by his own work. I don't think so. I don't think he ever believed in the Lord Jesus Christ as his Savior. So he's never going to see the ark. We will. Because in Revelation, we'll be in heaven with the Lord. The ark is gone. The ark does not touch Babylonian hands. The ark is raptured. The brazen altar goes. The laver goes. These pillars go. The spoons go. The snuffers go. The candlesticks go. There is no man. I love you know, uh, 18 cubits and a fill of 12 cubits. Do you think God would forget to mention his ark? And the captain of the guard took Sariah, the chief priest, and Zephaniah, the second priest, and the three keepers of the door. He took also out of the city a eunuch, which had the charge of the men of war, seven men of them that were near the king's person, which were found in the city, and the principal scribe of the host, who must mustered the people of the land, three score men of the people of the land, and were found in the midst of the city, but no mention of the ark. So never Zedan, the captain of the guard, took them and brought them to the king of Babylon to Riblah. The king of Babylon smote them and put them to death in Riblah in the land of Hamath. Thus Judah was carried, carried away captive out of his own land. This is the people who Nebuchadnezzar carried away captive in the seventh year. All right, this is the first time. Three thousand Jews and thirty. Three thousand Jews and three and twenty. 3,023 Jews the first time. In the 11th year, the second time of Nebuchadnezzar, he carried away captive Jerusalem 832 persons. 832. In the third and final 20th year of Nebuchadnezzar, Nebuchadnezzar, the captain of the guard, carried away captive of Jews 745 persons. All the persons were 4,600. Now in Babylon for 70 years. And it came to pass in the seventh and thirtieth year of the captivity of Jehoiakim, king of Judah, in the twelfth month, in the fifth and twenty, the five and twentieth day of the month, that evil Mordecai, king of Babylon, in the first year of his reign, lifted up the head of Jehoiakim, the king of Judah, and brought him forth out of prison. Fifty-two eleven, and spake kindly unto him, and set his throne above the throne of the kings that were with him in Babylon, not Judah, not Jerusalem. And changed his prison garments, and he died. And he did continually eat bread before him, all the days of his life. For his diet there was a continued diet given him of the king of Babylon, every day a portion to the day of his death, all the days of his life. And that's how Jeremiah ends. Here is a king, Jehoiakim. He's living. He's not in his. He's not in his land, but he's eating in a foreign field with foreign gods. Under a foreign uh, dictatorship, under a foreign land, nothing to do with Jewish, nothing to do with God, nothing to do with nothing but the heathen. Now, if you don't know how the Jews respected the, the heathen, you have not read Jonah. You have not sought the life of Peter. You have not sought the disciples when that uh, the, uh, Samarian woman comes for help with her daughter. This is the gross of the gross for the Jewish people. These people, they're eating stuff and doing things that forbid against their law. And it's because they sinned against God. 